Welcome everyone to a new episode of Genuine Rockstars and today's Genuine Rockstar is Dr. Lorenzo Marchetti. Thank you so much for joining us Lorenzo, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Could you tell our audience a little bit about who you are and what you do? So I'm a researcher and I study fossil footprints, mostly of very ancient animals, so uh, early dinosaurs or ancestors of dinosaur or animal that lives lived before them. I work at the Museum für Naturkunde in Berlin in the Jörg Frobisch lab, which is a lab uh, studying mostly Paleozoic animals. I'm uh, involved in a project that aims to revise an important site in central Germany, the Bromacher site, which is a Permian, where we found both footprints and skeletons. And these skeletons are actually the producers of the footprints in this case. <laughs> no way! Yeah. Are they like footprints and then the corpse? No, or? no, no. <laughs> We're not that <laughs> lucky. <laughs> You're a paleontologist with a specialization of fossil footprints. Yeah. What got you interested in paleontology in the first place and what drove you towards fossil footprints? Uh, when I was very little, so four, I was attracted by dinosaurs. <laughs> so my parents uh, g uh, gave me as a present a uh, little dinosaur and uh, everything started and I started to, <laughs> to buy divulgative books and to watch uh, TV programs about, about dinosaurs and, and so on. So I kept this interest and when I finished secondary school, I had to decide what to do. And so that was still my biggest interest. <laughs> I was also interested in archaeology and in astronomy, but then I decided for paleontology and I chose uh, the path uh, of geology to get there. Could you talk us through the most important differences between trace fossils and body fossils? Because they're really different things. Trace fossils are uh, impressions or fossils created by the animals during their life. So this can be footprints, can be swim traces, can be digging traces, can be feeding traces but also like bite marks on other animals or even uh, copper lice, which is fossil shit, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Instead, body fossils are actual parts of the animal that after fossilization came to us. So an animal can leave how many footprints and copper lice, but just one body? And they provide uh, an information that can be uh, joined with the information that we got from skeletons. So it's actually very important. How do footprints get preserved if they're so common? So mud would be a good substrate when it's not too wet and also sand. Like for instance, sand on beaches is perfect when it is not dry. So then it's soft, then something walks on it. But then how does it get preserved afterwards? It has to be covered quite rapidly so that like sealed it and permits it to, to be preserved. And then it has to be buried or solidified. And afterwards, uh, it has to come to us again, so like through tectonic movements, and then we can discover it on the rocks. So you have a muddy shoreline, you walk on it, then it hardens in the sun, and then another layer of mud gets deposited over that. Uh, your friend walks on that one, and then another layer, and another layer, and another layer. And then it gets buried deep in the earth. And then because it gets lifted up to us later on and we find it, that's how we can study the footprints. Last month, we met in the Museumfabriek in Enschede, yeah. uh, which is in the Netherlands, in the east, to study the fossil footprint collection by the late Henk Oostering, who's quite a, a famous local uh, fossil collector. Um, could you tell us what is so special about this collection? Oh, well, this collection is probably the, the biggest 
on footprints from the Middle Triassic of Mushaka, uh, where there was the sea that uh, intermittently covered the surface. And there were a lot of animals over there uh, trampling the surface and and are that well preserved that you can even see the scaly skin of the animals. So the substrate of Winterswijk, it's a limestone, but it's what we call a micritic limestone. So it has almost the smallest imaginable grain size. It's produced by microorganisms that sort of like exhume uh, calcium carbonate to the water and that just uh, settles on the bottom. So when something walks on it, it's still mushy and soft. And then later on, it just dries out and forms this very thin layer. So another thing important about this collection is that it was studied in the, in the 80s. Some of this material was used to introduce ichnotaxa, so reference uh, fossils for the study of paleontology. It's important to restudy this material. Hank Oslink uh, was an, an, an amateur, which, uh, which actually means that he loved it so much that he did this in his free time. And he spent his entire life almost, uh, every waking hour that he didn't have anything else to do, he spent in the quarry collecting fossils. Um, and when I say amateur, I don't mean to talk down on him uh, because he was actually quite professional in naming, listing everything that he did and describing with uh, uh, the footprints with professionals and publishing this material. Um, so we, we have a lot to owe to Hank Oostering. Yes, he was quite an exceptional amateur, I would say. <laughs> yes, exactly. Amateurs. Uh, they they are often even more enthusiastic than the actual researchers. <laughs> so that's really great. And they can spend a lot of time and resources finding finding fossils. Exactly. If if we're lucky we can go into the field once or twice a year. Yeah, exactly, because we have to, to deal with a lot of things and also doing field work and especially excavations is expensive and time consuming. So amateurs are, are really a, a big resource for us. So roughly 245 million years ago, uh, the area of present day Winterswijk was the west coast of the Muschelkalk Sea, which was a sea that covered large parts of Europe, mostly Germany and, and northern Italy and we know that we have skeletal remains of marine reptiles, many of them actually. Yes. But the tracks, they don't look like they were made by marine reptiles. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks weird. And I think in the first study, they even tried to match these marine reptiles to the footprints. But of course, that <laughs> doesn't work. <laughs> So what we know from other sites and skeletons is that the footprints that we find in, in Winterswijk should be footprints of archosaurs, ancestors of dinosaurs, smaller animals uh, similar to lizards, and also other small animals which are in the group which origin later the mammals. Okay, so we've got ancestors of lizards that we know, ancestors of dinosaurs that are no longer there, yeah. and ancestors of mammals all walking together yeah. uh, on, the, <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So maybe they they died in a place that were was not suited for preservation of skeletons. Exactly, because if you want to preserve a skeleton, then water is ideal. So yes. if they would have died on the beach, it would not have even been a bad place to die. But apparently they were there to eat or play or <laughs> do something <laughs> else, but not uh, the, it was not a place where they typically died. But yeah. I, I also don't think it was necessarily a place where the marine reptiles died, because when you look at the skeletons of the marine reptiles of Winterswijk, then quite often you find a limb or you find a skull or you find a couple of limb bones, but you don't really find that many articulated skeletons. There are some, don't get me wrong, but most of them look as if they got washed in with the tides, actually. Okay, so transported material. 
but then when you look at the coast of Winterswijk uh, and you compare it to the beach today and a whale washes onto the beach and then they find that there were tiny footsteps around the whale of, I don't know, a fox or a dog or a wolf. The whale never made those footprints. The marine reptiles that either died on or arrived as corpses onto the beach of Winterswijk, they didn't first leave the footprints. It's also a possibility that these animals doing footprints were feeding on these carcasses of marine reptiles. <laughs> so uh, which advice do you have for our viewers who are also interested in pursuing a career in paleontology or specifically in ichnology, which is the study of traces? I would suggest to do university courses in biology or geology which are the two paths that bring to paleontology. I think you always need a bit of both. Yeah, you need both. So if you do geology, then you have to study a bit more about biology later. If you do biology, you have to study a bit more of geology later. You see footprints with obliquely light, so not uh, light directly on the footprint, but lateral. And that is easy to obtain in uh, lab conditions, so when you can arrange electric light. But when you're out, uh, when you are, are outside, the best moments when the footprints are like flat on the surface uh, are the sunrise and then the sunset. Lorenzo is a little bit of a vampire. He works either in the dark with artificial light or, or yeah. sunset and sunrise. Yeah, but exactly. between the, during the day, you will not find him outside in the sun. <laughs> but actually, there is a thing that we can do with sunlight, which is photogrammetry, uh, with which we take several photos of an object or footprints or a trackway from... Uh, different angles, and in this case, you don't have to have uh, oblique light, but it's better that the object is completely illuminated, so the shadows don't bother the software later. What is the most amazing fossil footprint that you've ever studied? I mean, I studied really a lot of footprints. Yeah, body prints with scale impression also, so scaly skin footprints from sand dunes in deserts. There's a specimen in, in California, which is like four or six meters. How do you like to spend the hours during which you're not sleeping or studying footprints? You know, during the day when all of us are outside. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I like to cook, mostly Italian food. Yeah, going outside, stroll into the nature and travel. So where do you see yourself a few years from now? Uh, I'd like to be a professor in a university in Europe, maybe collection manager or some other job that permits me to, to work still on uh, footprints and skeletons. Thank you so much for talking to us, Lorenzo. You're a genuine rock star. Oh, thank you. <laughs>